So when okay. anyone has their initiative, let me know and I'll make a note of it. 12. All right. Amber. Got it. Player four has a six. Got it. 13 for Lilu. All right. Badox got an 11. Got it. Player Dre one is a... Oops, sorry, Dre, you go first. Uh, Dre has 19. Got it. And player one Aves has a total of 14 for initiative. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Give me just a second to reorder the initiative. Okay. So with that said, Andre, you're going to be at the top of the turn order. As of right now, you can see what's going with Aya. She is oblivious to the spider, but you can see the spider cresting over the hill, preparing to jump at her. Is she close enough to hear me? Yes. Okay. So Jure goes, Aya, Aya, come back. Does she respond? She starts to look towards you, but she doesn't seem to gather why you're saying it. So she's still not making it a actual motion okay. or anything else. Okay. So Jure doesn't want to quite start combat yet. So she quickly rushes over to try to pull Aya back to the group. Great. And could you confirm if you have 30 movement speed? Yes. Okay. So 5, 10, 15, 20. You can get right here with 25, and then you'll be able to grab her hand as your action and start pulling her about five feet away and use up your movement. Okay. And she lets you pull her away, but she's baffled at first. She doesn't seem to understand what's going on. Okay. So, so Jure goes, Aya, Aya, you have to look around at your surroundings. Stop and take a look. Okay. And she'll start doing that. And then as she's doing it, that's when see player for brooks and Vidark. you two of you uh, i need to know what your passive perception is 17 11. all right so brooks you're completely unaware of this however Vidark, you are going to be aware of this other spider that is crawling down the side of this hill coming over to flank the two of you All right, that comes that turn. And with that, we have Aves. It's your turn. Okay. You are um, aware of the uh, spider to the left as well, unless you uh, are making an active chance to look around. But I am aware of the spider directly ahead of Aya, correct? Absolutely, yep. Okay, perfect. Um, I am going to use my action to... Oh, goodness. <laughs> Cast catapult at okay. the spider above. I'm basically going to just take, base, use the spell, uh, the like a rock nearby as a catalyst for the spell. Uh, the spider needs to make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Otherwise, take damage from the catapult. All right. So that spider was able to roll a 20. Okay. Um, let's see. With that, I am going to then use my bonus action to um, use my telekinetic feature uh, from my feet to force a strength saving throw to basically try and pull it five feet off the edge to try and like basically like maybe make it topple down the ledge to the left or towards us. Sure. Um, to give us like a advantage and throw Aya like a little hint, <laughs> like, hey, this is here. And then um, your spell DC, I believe, is going to be either in a 12 or a 13, which is it? My spell DC is actually 15. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so then with a 15, it fails magnificently and it will take two points of fall damage for falling that 10 feet. As it falls over, it makes a loud kind of not a crunching noise, but a cracking noise as it hits several rocks. And Aya will jump and spin seeing the spider at this point in time and kind of push back against Dariah as she's backing away from it. And I'll basically just echo uh, Jure's words and say, you really do need to pay attention to your surroundings, my dear. We're in the thick of it now. 
All right. Well, Lilu, you are up. So where am I at? I'm. Uh, you're a player five, and you are. Uh, I'm sorry oh, about that. I moved the wrong. No, I moved. The... Yeah, you're six. You're right here in the middle. Okay. Um. Can I take take a few steps back? Uh, sure. I can do a hypothetical here, and we can move you back. Okay. One second. There you are. Okay. So I've moved you uh, ten feet back. And is there anything else that you'd like to do at this time? Um, what is what is the spider doing? Uh, the spider so far, the one that has been interacted with, has been pulled off of the ledge. The other one is slowly stalking, and so far, unless you use an action to make a perception check, it's outside of your view. It's it's just not something you'll be able to spot. So it's still invisible or stealth to you at this time. Okay. Um, for the spider that we know about, can I do uh, mage hand to try to distract it? Uh, unfortunately, you're a bit too far away from that. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. However, what other abilities do you have? Let's see. Like, do you have Thaumaturgy? I do. You would actually be able to use Thaumaturgy, and uh, just so happens, Aya has holding a torch right above her head, where you might be able to make that torch flare up and cause an intimidation effect. Okay, we'll go with that. Sure, would you like to add any flavor or flare on how that's like a fire flare up could occur? Um, we'll have it um, start to flicker to see if it can kind of like distract the spider away from us. Sure. So what I'll have you do here is, um, would you like to make an intimidation or a mm -hmm. performance check? Uh, you can tell me which one you would prefer to do so I can respond to it. Okay. Let's do, sorry, performance or what? Uh, performance or intimidation. Okay. Let's go with um, intimidation. All right. So I would like you to make a d20 and add your roll. Let me know what the score is. A 15. Fantastic. All right. So Aya is thankfully able to stand her ground as her torch suddenly flares to life and starts the flickering of its own volition above her head. Uh, she looks up at it, but she seems to have gathered that it must be you guys doing something and she doesn't drop the torch or freak out. Uh, the spider, however is not able to successfully identify that this is a magical effect and begins to recoil and you know shy away from the fire that is over top of Aya. It doesn't seem keen on approaching her at this point anymore. All right, and then I will need, let's see, player five, Jirai and Vaydark, you'll have to um, make a Dexterity saving throw here in just a moment. As the two of you get rushed by two additional large spiders that are coming, one from outside of the cave and the other over, and they're trying to bulldoze you and knock you both prone. So I would like for both of you to make a dexterity saving throw. What are you for Vedar? For Vadok, I just need you to roll a d20, add your dex score, and then let me know what you rolled, and I'll tell you if you beat the DC. Uh, the save was a 14. Okay, you saved. You were able to hold your ground and not be tripped. Enjoy. I rolled 11 plus 4, so 15. You also were able to hold your ground and not be tripped. However, the two of you are now inside of uh, melee combat. So if you guys try to back out of it, you will be hit with an attack of opportunity. I can explain that as needed. We will continue on to the turn order. It is now Amber's turn. Okay. Um, no. Um, Casting a spell is not a bonus action, right? It's an action. Most spells are actions. However, some spells will specifically outline if they are able to be cast as a bonus or as a reaction. If it doesn't list it, um, it's an action. 
Yeah, that's an action. Okay. Um, I am going to use my turn to. I'm gonna run up um, towards, like in almost like in front of like player one. Okay. Or like in between. Yeah, there we go. And then um, I am gonna cast searing smite on myself. Fantastic. Could you read it out loud for the group? Yeah, sure. So searing sight. The next time you hit a creature with a melee weapon attacking during the spell's duration, your weapon flares with white hot intensity and the attack deals an extra 1d6 fire damage to the target and causes the target to ignite into flames at the start of each of its turns until the spell ends. The target must make a constitution save and throw on a fail saved it takes 1d uh, 1d6 fire damage on a successful save the spell ends if the target or creature is within five feet or it uses a, an action it can put out the flames or it if some other effect douses the flames such as target being submerged in water the spell ends thank you so much Okay, so go ahead and so for these type of spells, especially with Paladin, they're usually made in conjunction mm -hmm. with an attack. So make right. your melee attack, and then if you land the hit, the spell effect can also go in. And yes, Searing Smite is a, a bonus action on this one. So that's something oh, that's okay. going to be the part of your action, which is the attack action. Okay, and so I'm going to try to hit him with my mace. Yep. And... Yes, that's a 25 to hit. Uh, out of curiosity, did, what did you roll on the dice? Was 20. Nat 20. All right. So nat 20. That means you get to double your damage Double dice. damage. Yeah. Awesome. And that includes on the smite spell as well. Right. So that's... Uh, oh, sorry, not smite. Yeah. Right. So the... Uh, hold on. That's... Okay, that's nine, but now I have to do another d6. For the for the uh, steering smite, mm -hmm. and that's another five, so that would be uh, fourteen damage. Okay. Uh, now, out of curiosity, you did add your strength modifier to the damage as well, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so fourteen damage is actually enough to completely crush this first giant spider. As your weapon ignites in a white hot blaze, it crushes through the creature's carapace and it just simply beats it into a pulp and it is gone. You have completely eradicated that threat. And Vidark, after seeing your ferocious companion go up and smush a spider, it's your turn. How would you like to go? I think we all need to be a little bit more aware of our surroundings. There's one on the left. Um, so alerting the rest of the party to the location of the one that they had not seen that's creeping down at us. I will then um, combat wild shape into dire wolf form. Okay. Um, and oh, I'll take the attack of opportunity on that. No, so I'll just go straight after the one in front. In one better. Uh, 24 total. It's only a natural mark tank. All right, that's a definite hit. Seven points worth of damage and uh, needs to make a DC 13 strength saving throw will be not prone. It saves. All right, so the spider gets hit, and, or bit, I should say, a uh, bit hard, but it seems to still be standing and staying in the fight. Would you like to strafe the spider and get yourself in a different position or leave the combat and invite an attack of out? I want to actually position myself between it and the other one, but without leaving um, threat range. Okay, you'll be able to position yourself right here, just five feet to the left. All right, uh, with that... Brooks, it is now your turn. All right. 
Brooks turns to our young adventurer friend and he's like, this is what you came for. And Brooks moves to the other side <laughs> of him, kind of right above Lilu. Okay. And right about Player here. four. Lilu's number six, sorry. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, you want to go behind. I, I misunderstood. Like yeah. how far ahead of you want to be with, okay. No, no, that You're works. Good. And then he will attack the same one that Vader attacked, you know, try and combine efforts with Eldritch Blast. <laughs> All right, make your attack. Ten. A ten is unfortunately not enough to hit. So as you were preparing your Eldritch Blast to cast, um, Gilbin had started to back up with you and just so made it so you had to like alter your hand just a bit. And the spider dodged just right the way where it blasted behind it and shattered some of the rock along the cliff face. Can I try and persuade him and be like, you can do it? Yeah, go ahead. Let's go ahead and make a quick persuasion, Jake. I'll call that your reaction. Or not your reaction, now your free action. 22. All right. Uh, he's looking back at you and uh, he can do it. And he goes, I'm going to die. As he takes out his mace and he steps forward right up next to the um the Vadark dog and he tries to land a hit but then he stops and he instead takes the mace up with two hands jumps up and tries to slam down instead and gloriously misses as he jumps up but completely overestimates the fact that spiders move and he swings down hard. Uh, he watched the mace ricochet off of the ground, almost coming back up to hit himself back in the face. As he then stumbles backwards, and then he decides he's going to not get in this fight, invite an attack of opportunity as he deliberately tries to move out of combat. And the spider gets a free bite. And thankfully misses as it rips the back end of his pants as he gets away. And with that, the turn order goes back to the top with Dry. Okay. Um, the spider at the top, how far away is it? That spider is currently 5, 15, 20 from you. Okay. Is it making any move towards us? At this point in time, it seems to be intimidated by the fire. You suspect it may try to circumvent it rather than outright flee, but it also seems to be a, at a state where one more good push could make it flee from battle as well. Okay. So before Dre makes a move, she yells at everyone, come on, come on, guys, we, we got this. We, we got one. We can do this. Um, Aya, does, is her torch still flaming? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. So Dre has a... Um, Dre has a short bow, so she takes one of the arrows uh, of the short bow and puts it into the flame to try to light it on fire. Sure, yeah, go ahead. You're able to go ahead and get a small spark going. Um, if you're willing to use your move action uh, up, I will go ahead and say that you're able to rip a small shred of cloth and then actually ignite that arrow. Okay, okay. Um, and then I do have crossbow expert attack. Awesome. So for crossbow expert attack, go ahead and read that out to the group for what that does. And if okay. you need me to bring it up and read it for you, I totally can. Okay. When you use the attack action and attack with a one-handed weapon, you can use a bonus action to attack with a hand crossbow you are holding. Mm -hmm. So um, in this case, what that is implying is that you're going to be um, hitting with a melee weapon and then shooting with that. However, mm -hmm. what the way I think you're trying to say is you're trying to um, shoot with a other crossbow and then shoot with a hand crossbow as well. Correct. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the only thing you're going to run into is you're going to not be able to reload for your light crossbow for this round. Okay, And you'll have to fine. spend your turn reloading or just dropping them and pulling a different weapon, but you can totally do that. Go for it. Okay, okay. So I'm going to roll. Let me get that up. Uh, 16 plus 4, so 20. Okay, that will hit. 
All right, let's see. Damage. <laughs> One plus two, so three. Okay. All right, so that spider is still up. Um, it is bleeding from its side, but it still seems to be in the fight. Uh, I, at this point, is now going to turn around and she's going to look at the torch, consider throwing it for a moment, think better of it, and then she's going to rush forward, pulling her mace out from her side and then trying to clobber it. And doing just slightly better than Gildan, um, proving she is top of the class, at least in this case, as she swings and the horrible sound of something metal crashing against rock with a loud ringing noise echoes throughout the area. And then after that, she kind of positions herself and she's doing a good job of seeming to weave in and out of the fight with the spider, uh, seeming like she could possibly hold her own for at least a little bit. And that's when the spider gets its opportunity to attack Aya back. which also happens to land a miss as I is able to use the mace to definitely knock its uh, head away as it lunged in for a bite and simultaneously avoid getting tripped up with its legs. But that other spider to the left has looped in and is now also trying to get a piece of dog meat as it tries to bite Vidark. And rolls a 21 to hit. That will hit. All right. You will take 1d plus 2. You will take 5 points of piercing damage. I need you to make a constitution saving throw against poison. I'm sorry, you're muted, by that's, that. Yeah, no, that's only a 5. Okay. Uh, you have been afflicted with a poison condition. Uh, if you make any additional skill checks or ability checks or saving throws, they will be at disadvantage from this point forward until cured. All right, with that, the spiders have finished. Aves, it is your turn. Okay, um, so Aves is going to move uh, just northwest of player five, um, basically just putting himself in between, like basically, yeah, that works. That's perfect. Okay. Um, you want to be here. Either one works. I am not too terribly concerned. Sure. Um, I'm going to cast first Dissonant Whispers on the spider within range of Aya. Okay. Um, in order to try and force it to flee to give Aya more uh, chances to shine. Uh, the spider must make a wisdom saving throw of 15 or higher right. or take damage and be uh, it rolled a it rolled a twelve. It rolled a twelve. Yes. Oh, so I get to roll damage. It will take oh, eleven points of psychic damage. <laughs> uh, as you unleash your dissonant whispers upon the spider, you hear soft whimpering behind you from Gildan as he overhears it, and Aya seems to shudder and and almost like gets, you know, goosebumps as it ripples across her, and the spider slowly rips itself apart, unable to fathom or comprehend the mental assault that you just laid upon it. And while it didn't flee, it is very much so out of the fight now. Um, I will use my bonus action to... Uh, you know, I'm just going to use the rest of my turn to basically like try and like bring Aya and Gilbin back into this and say, both of you are doing amazing and i believe in both of you keep it up okay all right so after that we have lilu you are up um can i cast healing word for vadar yes you're within range okay so four 
Uh, Vedark, you heal for 4 HP. And Lulu, would you like to move or reposition yourself in any way? Um, yeah, I'll move back um, kind of close to where um, Gildan is. All right. Well, let's see. Would you like to move to here? Yeah. Here? Yeah, that first one. Okay, you got it. All right. And anything else before we move on to the spider north of Vadar? Nope, you're good. Okay. Uh, Vadar, you have just been healed, and the spider is looking to get another nibble out of you as the north spider takes a chomp. Uh, that is going to be an 11 to hit. That will miss. All right. So the bite misses you as you're agile able to step away and avoid the battle. Uh, you are going to get the opportunity for an attack of opportunity as the spider is no longer interested in this fight, feeling that it can no longer win. So make your attack as it starts to flee. And a natural two, so that's going to miss. All right. That's fine. It is now your turn, Vadark. The spider has cleared, um, scaled itself up the wall. That is going to be a 20 to 25 foot uh, broken climb. You might be able to do it with a handhold. It would be pretty difficult as a wolf. Okay. Um, just as a note, wolf is a uh, die wolf is a large form. Mm -hmm. um, so it would take up more space. I'm wanting to try and flip Gilbin onto my back. Sure. Let me see if Gilbin is receptive to the wolf trying to do this. Gilbin is receptive to the Vadark wolf approaching him with a nuzzle between his legs to flip him up onto his back. And then I wish to turn to attack the remaining spider, if I can, right. unless that took my action to bring him up. I will go ahead and give that to you as a free action, and I'll have it use up Gilbin's move action instead. Yeah, wonderful, thank you. Um, so with pack tactics, I get advantage, but that cancels the disadvantage. Mm -hmm. That is 10 plus five. five plus three. Plus five, so 22 total to hit. Okay, that does hit. Four. 12 points worth of damage. All right. And again, that... the... Sorry. Please, go ahead. Uh, DC 13 strength saving throw, or he's not prone. Uh, he does stay up, unfortunately. However, the uh, staying up is definitely a metaphor at this point, as you essentially broke two of its legs in your mauling. And the creature is definitely looking extremely worse for wear, as it becomes Brooke's turn. Uh, OK. Well, hmm, I'm stuck. Team, should I kill the one that's fleeing or the one in front of me? Um, kill the one that's fleeing. I can get the other one. Oh, I guess Brooks gets to shout that in character too. Hey, which one? <laughs> <laughs> and then Brooks will launch at the one far away. All right, so as the spider's racing up the wall, you with your uh, Eldritch Blast Nerf gun, take aim. <laughs> I got a 20, not natural. Okay, so you got a dirty 20. A dirty 20 still hit, so please roll that damage. 11. 11 is enough to crush that spider up against the wall as it's trying to flee, like to the HP, exactly as this spider is now smushed and falling and sliding back down in pieces along the wall. And then can I move mm -hmm. behind Lilu again? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you jump behind Lilu, uh, keeping yourselves up with moral support of who's going to be in front or not. And with <laughs> that, it goes to Gilbin's. I'm uh, oh, sorry, not Gilbin's. Amber, your turn. Uh, so Amber run up, runs up um, to the, the remaining spider and wields her mace. Oh, I have my, uh, here we go. Why? Here we go. Ah, oh, it misses. That's a six. 
Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, as you're oh, rushing, sorry, that's a 12. A 12? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's still not enough to hit. Okay. So you rush forward with your mace held high, uh, coming down off of the high of obliterating the previous one. You swing down hard, but that spider's in such bad shape, it's moving erratically, and it's just enough that you barely miss it with your mace. Um, Gilbin, right next to you, is letting out the most horrific war cry ever, uh, and it's horrific because he's horrified at what's going on. As he tries to underhand swing the mace alongside the wolf's flank, trying to uppercut the spider. And unfortunately misses as the mace goes past. Just, just same as you, missing by a point as the mace just swings through and he does not land the hit. And we go back to the top of the turn order with your eye. All right. Um, Drea attempts to call over to Aya. Aya, come back here. We can't go any farther. She'll respond to it, and she'll look at you and kind of nod, and she's 100% an adrenaline junkie right now. Okay. Um, and how far is, is that spider from me? Well, that spider is currently 5, 10, sorry, 5, 15, 20, 25. Okay. Um, and from the previous round, she still has um, the hand crossbow ready mm -hmm. to go. So she's going to try to fire that. Sure thing. And it's a range, range 30. So, yes, you're uh, within range. You're good. Yep. 15 plus four, so 19. That's a hit. And then Ooh. damage is two plus two, so four. <laughs> and that's enough to bring the spider down. As one mace goes slamming down, the other one goes up, a dart pierces through that crossed X of maces, slamming into the chest of the spider and causing it to wither and collapse and, and fall down. And with that, the combat has come to an end as the spiders apparently are eradicated. 